So under transactions, some things are very interesting. Every transaction must be tied to a QR code. So we'll know the QR code the person paid for. So the people that will be using this transaction table mostly are the buyers. So we are using this transaction to keep it, this table to keep a log of who paid what to who. That's it, simple. So here we're gonna do um, integer. So let's know the user self. This is the user ID. We're trying to know the user that is even making the transaction. So user making transaction. Okay, cool. So now let us know um, table the QR code integer. We need to know the QR code ID. Which of the QR codes are they paying for? All right. Then we need to know um, the status of the code, whether it was successful or failed. So table, I'll make this string because we want to manually type out what the status is. So I'll, do, I'll say status. So um, the status can range from initiated. Um, payment failed, completed. And successful, completed and uh, completed and payment failed, something like that. So we can have this kind of status updates. So the reason is that um, at the end of the day, we just want um, we just want to be able to query this table, and we get all the once all the time that a user started a payment but didn't complete it. And the time that they actually completed the payment but the payment didn't go through for instance they have made a payment to paypal and paypal gets back to us telling us that they don't have a complete they don't have an account or something like that you get what i'm saying there might be an error or, or thereabout so we can also have a message i duplicated this line string we can have message uh, message so this message, this is what, where we'll paste the message that is coming from the um, whatever error or message that is coming from the website. Let's say they attempted to pay and they didn't have sufficient balance and PayPal tell, sends back to our website telling us that this person did not have, does not have sufficient balance. So we need to make it a long text so that it, it can be long. So we're going, we're going to L. Long text can contain more. Um, characters look at it long text it can contain more characters than uh, a normal um, string so in case the message is long we need to be able to save everything here so we need to also make it um, nullable it's optional to have a message so by default we need to put a default message here we'll do the default uh, not initiated So if a user gets here at all, if a record is created on this transactions table at all, we should save initiated inside it. So we know that by the time the user is even getting here, it means that they have already snapped the QR code from the client website and they're now coming to our platform to pay. That is initiated. All right. So that if this, if they abandon it, we can also, we can be able to query and see all abandoned um, uh, payments. And then we can send a mass email, hey, you, you have not completed your payment, something like that. So this is it basically. Then we need to um, take note of how much they paid. So we can do something like um, what we did before, table, float. And uh, we're going to say amount, we're going to say is 10,4. All right. So we need to know how much you paid for the platform for the transaction just for fun um we're going to introduce a little redundancy here but it will help us in our query let's say we we can just do something like this integer um qr code owner id let us say that we need to nullable let us say we just need to track the owner of this QR code. Whoever created the QR code, we just want every payment to contain their own ID too. 
so that um, if any day we wake up and want to write a query to display to this person hey this is a list of all your QR codes that people have made payment for or this is a list of all the payments that people have made to your QR codes uh, we can be able to pull it out without writing complex queries so this is it and I remember if you have not coded Laravel before some of these things might be a little confusing but chill as we go down further in the video tutorial it will start making sense and start connecting now we have all this we have to um, move to the next section where we start creating the HTML section and um, before we do that I'm thinking that in the QR codes we need to put the QR code URL all right the image name or path I think we should call it path uh, QR code path I'll call it QR code underscore path this is a string now what this means is where the QR code is saved path to where QR code is saved on our server I say QR code image is saved on our server so um, I'm thinking we should make it no level the reason it can be no level is uh, we might decide not to be saving the QR code on our server we might just decide to in order to save space we just display it to the person once they copy it and refresh the page we, we delete that QR code and generate another one so that we don't have anything saved on our server alright now we're good everything works well now so see you in the next video